In this video, we'll be talking about the use of Photoshop Spot Healing Brush Tool as well as Healing Brush Tool to retouch the portraits. Welcome to Webbrick's Home. Hey guys, welcome to Webbrick's Home. And in this video, we'll be talking about retouching portrait images using the Spot Healing Brush Tool and Healing Brush Tool in Photoshop. Welcome to Webbrick's Home. So this is the image I'm going to use for this tutorial. And if you zoom in and see this photo from close range, you can see a lot of glimpses in the portrait, all right? So we'll use the Spot Healing Brush Tool as well as we'll also see the use of Healing Brush Tool while retouching this photo, all right? You can see the Healing Brush Tool right beneath the eyedropper tool in your tools bar. You can hit J on your keyboard to select this tool as well so let's select this one spot healing brush tool and with the spot healing brush tool you can see a couple of options on the options bar the first one is the brush size hardness spacing angle roundness and pen pressure option and since this is basically a brush tool you'll get these options and you'll get these options with any of the brush tool you're selecting for us all right so the first one is the size option that defines the size of the cursor or the brush on your document area you can increase the size or decrease the size with this brush tool and just like any other tools and for First up, you can use the big bracket open and close key to increase or decrease the brush tool. And if you're working with vacuum tab, you can use the pin pressure to increase or decrease the size. And if you are not using any vacuum tab, you can simply turn it off. And if you're using the mouse, you can right click on your mouse and drag it left or right to increase or decrease the size as well. All right. And then the second option is the hardness option. And this defines the softness of the edges of the brush stroke while painting on the document area. Let's have a look with the hardness 100%. Let's create a new layer on top of this background layer to work on the portrait non-destructively and you can see the brush stroke here and the edges are smooth over here right let's get it back to normal and let's say the same with the harness set to zero and here you can see the edges are blurry all right so that's what the harness does then you have got spacing option and spacing option defines the space between each stroke right so the first stroke is here you drag it you can see that multiple strokes connected to each other over here and if you increase the spacing let's say 92 portion let's say the brush harness to 100 percent and have a look and you can see the stroke is set on distance over here and you can see the distance if you increase it further you can see my brush stroke is painted after a huge gap all right and then you have got the angle option and since this is a round brush there's no point in changing the angle because on any angle this will be round and then you have got the roundness option that will define the roundness of the tip let's set the spacing to minimum and you can see the shape of the tip is quite different over here so that's how the brush tip works let's set it back to default then you have got the blending mode option over here this basically defines how the paint you add to the document area blends with the original image all right the default value is normal that lets Photoshop decide how the brush stroke is blended with the image then you have got the option to replace and this will basically replace the content of the image with the brush stroke and since this is an automatic peeling brush tool Photoshop tries to blend the stroke on its own then you have got multiply option and this basically adds darkness and contrast to the image you can see the original here all right this is getting a lot of contrast over here then you have got the screen option and that basically increases the brightness and adds a faded effect to the image then you have got darken and that will darken the lighter areas and leaves the darker area untouched then you have got the lighten option that will remove the darker area from the targeted region and keeps the brighter areas untouched all right and then you have got the color option and that's basically uses the lightness of the image pixel and the hue and saturation from the color we are using for the brush all right and then you have got the luminosity option and that will use the lightness of the selected color and the hue and saturation from the image pixel so this way the blending mode works and you can see the blending mode effects much better with the brush tool because with the spot healing brush tool we've got a couple of additional options that defines the output all right let's set it back to normal so the first option is is here proximity match all right this basically makes Photoshop analyze the proximity of the target area and replace the selected targeted area with the pixels closer to here all right then you have got the create texture option and that will basically add texture to the targeted area you can see it over here and then you have got the content over option and this will basically analyzes the entire image pixel and then replaces target 
carpet area with pixels from other regions that looks more natural replacement over there all right and one more thing is whenever you are working with the spot healing brush tool or healing brush tool you should never target a larger area at once if you target larger area at once you'll get a bad result best way to work with this tool is to target smaller areas and work slowly all right let's get it back to normal and then you have got the option of sample all layers whenever you are working with colors and force up you can sample the color from multiple layers and then use it in the desired layer all right since we are working on an empty layer only this brush stroke is present here if you uncheck the sample all layers option and drag it on your document you'll see no result over here because there's no object over here all right so whenever you sample all layers you can see we are asking Photoshop to use the background layer as well for the color sample and whenever we drag it it will take sample from all the available layers and create a better output all right then finally you have got the option for pin pressure over here as well so let's delete this one and work again and for this portrait image I like to use the blending mode lighten for the blemishes because they are darker than the skin tone I'll use content aware and sample all layers all right and I'll just dab in the areas I want to retouch and this way you'll see the original image is not going to be destructed because whatever we are doing we are working on an additional layer and you need to be more patient with this tool because it requires a lot of time and while retouching the photos you should never use the brush stroke continuously in a single area because that will simply destruct the original image so we have already cleared a lot of glimpses from this image you can see it from here before and this is after before after let's add a new layer and let's remove these white spots from here i'll use darken from here then and simply dab on areas that are more brighter let's take the size and let's retouch it a bit with lighten let's get it back to darken again lighten again wherever you need and with photoshop you can simply hold the ultra option key and click on one of the layers to view the particular layer only hold alt or option and click on the eye icon this is the before this is the after before after so you can see how it worked let's group these two together and hide it as of now and let's go to the healing brush tool and with the healing brush tool you can see a couple of options that are similar to the spot healing brush tool the brush option the blending mode option and the sample color option along with the paint pressure option here's a couple of additional options over here the first one let's see the sample source so you can see sample here and that basically asks us to define an area that we want to sample and then replace the target area with the same sample let's have a look over here let's create a new layer and let's sample all layers all right or you can see current layer and below not a problem then let's click on this area and you can see on the cursor image pixel from the selected area is being carried with the cursor you can click on any area and it will do the trick so you can see the difference here all right and with the sample option you can also use this tool that's the clone source panel and that allows you to define multiple sample sources that we call clone source in Photoshop this is the first image pixel being cloned let's create another one let's use the hair for that one and you can see the hair is being sampled you can click on any area and the hair sample is being used to replace the target area let's get it back and you can toggle between these options you can add up to five samples at a time then you have got the sample source coordinates x coordinate and y coordinate over here with the height angle and then you have got the option for overlay that means if you want to display it on the cursor or not check it off and you'll see no overlay effect on the brush all right then you have got the opacity option that you can control for the cursor overlay and that the blending mode over here and there's an additional option difference over here and you can see with the difference option difference between the existing colors value and the overlaying image pixels color value is being displayed over here all right let's get it back to normal then you have got the option clipped and this basically carries the entire image with the cursor only the part that fits the cursor size is being displayed and others are clipped let's remove the clip and you can see the area we selected sampled and the entire image is moving with this and it basically does is simply carries the paste the image on top of the existing document let's get it back to clipped and get it back to what it was before then you have got the auto hide option that allows the sample overlay be hidden whenever we use the cursor then you have got the invert option that inverts the overlay all right so that's how clone source works another option is the pattern option and that allows you to use pattern from your library you can use any pattern from here let's use this one 
and you can see how it is blend over here then you can also use a couple of more patterns from the library clicking on the gears icon and the top right corner and you can see at the bottom of this panel all the patterns available with this application over here you can also load patterns from other sources or create your own pattern all right then you have got the option for the thumbnail and the option to create a new pattern with name pattern or delete a pattern over here let's create a new pattern over here check it off select the background layer and let's use the marquee tool to select a region and then go to the edit option then define pattern and let's name it skin go back to the healing grass tool go to the pattern and at the bottom you can see your pattern over here click on it to select the selection area and then simply use a pattern to create the effect over here all right so that's how pattern works and then you have got the line option over here and that simply asks photoshop to align its stroke accordingly you can see here let's sample this area and if you paint it you can see area being painted over here my stroke is getting aligned matching the horizontal top base of this image for the first stroke and if i use the second stroke you can see second stroke is also matching the same content all right so that's what the alignment option does and you have got the option to use or unuse adjustment layers over here so you can ignore the adjustment layers when healing or you can include the adjustment layers as well whenever healing any image all right so that's how spot healing brush tool and healing brush tool works basically it's a good idea to use spot healing brush tool because that works to perfection to a larger extent than the healing brush tool but in cases where you need to replace the content with another content from the same image or same document you can use the healing brush tool instead all right so this is the result we achieved earlier that's the before and that's the after effect all right so that's all for today thanks for watching and please subscribe our channel for more videos thank you